Sleeping Beauty. Duke's story soon spread. The engines told Mr. Hugh. Mr. Hugh told the Finn Controller. The Finn Controller told the owner. The owner told his grace. His grace told the small controller. The small controller told the Finn clergyman. And the Finn clergyman told the fat one. That is why, one morning, the two clergymen and the small controller were looking at maps. Our railway, said the small controller, is laid on the bed of the old one, but swings round to end at the road south of that village. The old line kept straight on. It went north of the village and then to the mountains. The maps show the works at the old station. If Duke is anywhere, he's there. Are you writing another book, sir? Yes, said the Finn clergyman, but not about you. He smiled at their downcast faces. Cheer up, he went on. It's about a nice old engine who is lost. But if you're good, the artist might put you in the pictures. Ooh, thank you, sir. So the clergyman told them about Duke and Falcon and Stuart. So you see, he continued, Poor Duke was left alone. Three small engines sighed sympathetically. And we want to find him, and mend him, and make him happy again. Your controller wants to help, but he can't if you're naughty. Three small engines promised to be as good as gold. The three men spent days and days at the old station. They came up every morning on Bird's train. He always whistled, good luck as they walked up the track. But they had nothing in the evening except scratches and torn clothes. They wouldn't give up though. Duke's there somewhere, they said. The fat clergyman found him in the end. Scrambling over a hillock, he trod on something which wasn't there, crashed through a hole and landed legs astride on Duke's saddle tank. Our oh, sleeping beauty himself, he shouted. The Finn clergyman and the small controller peeped through the hole above. Excuse me, inquired Duke. Are you a vandal? Driver told me vandals break in and smash things. The fat clergyman ruefully felt his bruises. Bless you, no, he laughed. I'm quite respectable. I dropped in because I couldn't find your door. And he told Duke about Falcon and Stuart. So they did remember, said Duke softly. Then, does his grace approve? Yes, he's coming. To see me? How kind. And I'm all dirty. That would never do. Please clean me. So they set to work, and by the time the small controller had fetched his grace, Duke was the cleanest of anyone in the shed. Early next morning, Mike brought workmen and tools. They enlarged the fat clergyman's hole, lifted Duke out, and put him on a low loader to take him away by road. I'd be ashamed, Duke protested. To travel by road, it's, it's, it's undignified. I'm sorry, Duke, said his grace, but the small railway has no suitable tracks. Duke gave in then. But so many people came out and greeted him that he felt better. So they still remember me, he thought happily. Donald was waiting with a flat truck. Everyone cheered when Duke was lifted onto it, and still more when he started along the big railway on the last stage of his journey to his new home. Peter Sam and Sir Handel were on early turn. They peeped out of the shed. He's there, they whispered. Shh, shh, shh. Duke opened his eyes. You woke me up, he grumbled. In my young days, engines were... Seen and not heard, Grandpa, remember? I remember, said Duke. Two idle good-for-nothings called Falcon and Stuart. Good for you, Grandpa. We're glad you've come. We can keep you in order now. Keep me in order? Impertinence! Be off! The pair chuffed away, well content. Impudent scallywags, murmured Duke, but his old eyes twinkled, 
and for the first time in years, he smiled as he dozed in the sun.